reading. Our gospel reading for today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is born this day. Now, I have personally never had to do this, but I have had friends and family and colleagues who have had babies and have put together some sort of birth announcement. Maybe something that would go in the newspaper, or maybe more appropriate to this day, something that will go on social media. It would include the baby's name, the date and time that he or she was born, possibly his or her weight and length, and the names of the proud parents. I wonder if back in Jesus' time there was newspaper, what this birth announcement would say. Maybe it would say something like this. A baby boy, Jesus Christ, was born in Bethlehem, in the stable right outside the inn. And we will call him Emmanuel because it means God with us. He was born in the wee hours of December 25th. Mary, his 14-year-old unwed virgin mother, is doing well. And Jesus is the savior of the world. Now Jesus' mother, Mary, was an ordinary girl in the midst of something extraordinary. But what I have a hard time imagining is the image of these rulers and nobles of the lands reacting to Jesus' birth. A savior? This baby in a manger is our savior? This baby who is born to an unwed peasant girl, a virgin, is our savior? This baby? And for us, in 2017, we know that Jesus is our savior. But to the emperor, Caesar Augustus, this would not have been a welcome announcement. In verse 11 of our reading today, the angel announces to the shepherds that born to us this day in the city of Bethlehem is our savior. Now back when the Bible was being written, the title of savior was reserved for those with the highest powers. Typically, this term savior was given to a person with purpose, the opposite of just an ordinary person. And when it was used in biblical times, it was usually used to describe the Roman emperor. 
Caesar. So the angel calling this baby boy the savior was already turning the world upside down. This act of calling Jesus, this baby boy born to an ordinary, unwed teenage mother in a stable nonetheless, this act of calling Jesus a savior signifies a new sense of leadership in the world. When Jesus, this Messiah, is called savior, the whole world changes. The skies break open and angels come down saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom he favors. And this act of the angels appearing to these ordinary shepherds was an extraordinary act in itself. And I want to be honest, if I were out in a field at night and an angel suddenly started singing and proclaiming extraordinary things, no matter how many times the angels said, do not fear, I would probably be pretty afraid. But these shepherds, these ordinary people, were unafraid. Somehow, they knew. They knew that this baby boy who was born this day would be the one to free them from fear. The fear of the world, the fear of death, the fear of everything. This baby, born to us this day, is our savior. These shepherds were ordinary people in the midst of something extraordinary. Actually, these shepherds were less than, extra, less than ordinary people. These shepherds were not only watching over their flock of sheep by night, but they were living in their fields also. These shepherds, these less than ordinary people, were living on the margins of society. And God chose to send God's angels to them. Now I will talk for days about how much I love sheep, but I want to make one thing clear. This job that the shepherds had was not a coveted job in society. To keep watch of sheep was one thing, but to take the night shift, to watch these sheep sleep, who sheep are the opposite of nocturnal. This is something that no one wants to do. But like good and real shepherds, they respected their calling and they stayed with their sheep. These men, who were perhaps the most ordinary men you could find, were the men to whom the angels made themselves known. Jesus came to ordinary people, for ordinary people. And by the angel appearing to them, the angels made these unknowing shepherds apostles, prophets, and children of God. There is not a word in this story said about who these shepherds were. We don't know if they had family or friends or others who might have been counting on them in life. We don't know their past or who they become after this night. We don't know about their merits or their works, and that is the same with us. We are to receive a gift on this Christmas day, a free gift, regardless of who we are, who we were, what we have done or what we have not done. Jesus is our free gift. After the angels proclaimed this good news of great joy for all people, to the shepherds, these ordinary people, these shepherds went with haste, as fast as they could to Bethlehem to greet the baby Jesus. They could not wait any longer to confirm this good news and go forth and tell the world that Jesus the Savior is born. My favorite Christmas movie is Elf, and it has been for as long as I can remember. I remember seeing it for the first time in theaters when I was in fifth grade, when my family and I were on a trip to Texas. Since then, I watch it at least two times every December, 
and even sometimes, okay, let's be honest, always in the off season. The shepherds here remind me of the protagonist in the movie, Buddy the Elf. Now, Buddy is a human who, as a baby, crawled into Santa's sack of presents on one Christmas Eve. And Santa unknowingly took Buddy back to the North Pole. And Buddy became known as a human raised by elves. And there are three main rules that are embodied by the elves. They call it the Code of the Elves. And the one that is most important, the one that is emphasized throughout the whole movie, is that the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And as Buddy traveled to New York City to find his birth father, he made sure that all of his human family and friends knew this rule. And when I think of these shepherds going out without question as fast as they could, I think of the code of the elves. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And these shepherds might not have sang, or maybe they did. We don't really know. But these shepherds went forth to spread this news of Jesus' birth after they had gone to see the baby. They did this without thinking, full of excitement. Mary and Joseph and all of the shepherds watching their flock by night, these were all ordinary people in the midst of something extraordinary. God came to earth and God made himself known through ordinary people. God didn't come to earth only for the people society deemed extraordinary. God came to earth for everyone to bring good news of great joy for all people. For all people. This includes those today who society still might deem unextraordinary like an unwed teenage mother who was also a refugee, like a man who stepped up to be a parent to a child who wasn't his, to a group of lower class workers living on the margins of society. God appeared to the most unexpected, absolutely ordinary people that there were. God came as a baby to bring peace to everyone, and this was not today's version of peace, where we think of the absence of war or conflict. Because the angel was appearing to Jewish shepherds, this peace was shalom, the well-being of all people, the perfect harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility of all people. This peace that was brought to us through Jesus was a new kind of peace, a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that, in biblical times, ordinary people didn't get to experience. What the world despised, the angels honored. Those who were ordinary have been made extraordinary through Jesus' birth. The kingdom of Christ is a proclamation of joy, peace, and grace as the angels sang that Jesus is the savior of the whole world to free all of God's people and save us all from sins. And this has been done this day and will continue to be done. Martin Luther wrote about the unexpectedness of God in a Christmas sermon he gave many, many years ago. He wrote that the only present you need to bring for God is a happy heart. God smiles and the host of heaven rejoices. He wrote that God was satisfied with a manger so that we could live eternally in a mansion. Today, 2,000 years later, we are still living into the echoes of these angels, the echoes of the proclamation of the shepherds telling all the world what had happened on this day. Our job as Christians is to go forward proclaiming the good news of Christ's birth, that through Christ, 
We ordinary people become extraordinary. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. God turned the world upside down. Because we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus today and every day, we ordinary people are made extraordinary simply by being loved by God. Mary, an ordinary girl, delivered her baby boy, and by doing so, we, all the ordinary people on the earth, past, present, and future, are all delivered from sin. God turns us, ordinary people, into extraordinary people, loved beyond measure. And there is no better gift than that. Amen.